And so it's been a few days since we've had the Dragon Maids Break event launch. And so by now, I think a lot of people have had the chance to play this event. Uh, whatever that means. And now I just wanted to talk a little bit about the feedback of the event, how I feel about it, but more importantly, how the entire community feels. This is absolutely not a video to like shit all over Tour Dog, like absolutely not. But all I really wanted to say is like, there are a lot of things that could be improved. Let's, let's put it that way. Hi, welcome back to another Alchemy Stars video. My name is Lace and today we're gonna be talking about this Dragon Maids Break event. In a nutshell, I am essentially gonna be rating this event like based on a couple of different factors. But like I said, more importantly, we're also gonna go through a whole bunch of community feedback. And so to be honest, that's probably where I really do want to spend the majority of my time. And so let's just quickly run through my feedback on all of this event. And obviously I'm gonna focus primarily on the positives because I think a lot of the criticism has been covered by the community, which we will get to later. All right, so what exactly was good about the event? Let's start off with the rewards themselves, which were which were pretty nice to be honest. So via the login event back over here, we did get a Fafnir for free and I think this is a great move it just means that everybody can to an extent get involved with this event although there isn't really much more than getting the characters and so whilst we're here like this login event very very standard we're just getting a whole bunch of currencies and we are also getting a whole bunch of gemmies nothing too much to be said about this one I do quite like all of these like thematic exclusive furnitures avatars like these collectibles the fact that not only is it really easy to collect them but like they are also kind of canonical to the anime to like the context right so to you guys who did explain to me in the comments on one of my last few videos, like the reason that we keep seeing Toru's tail being served up, whether it be like oven baked or whatever, it's all because she is trying to get Kobayashi to eat it, which is pretty funny. And so I completely respect that. I completely get this now and that's just good to see. All right, moving through Toru's kitchen. So these rewards over here are also quite good, but realistically speaking, like the same can be said with this one. It's quite standard. I think it is comparable to the hero event in which we had like pretty much the same box. All in all, very very, very generous. One of the better systems in my opinion, especially because we can go back and clear the boxes after we've gotten like the prime prize. The five star selector for the Dragon Maid collab, awesome. Incredibly awesome. Again, it's trying to get everybody to kind of like dip their feet into this event, be able to participate in some way with either Lukoa or Elma. All right, so moving on, I did want to talk about this illustration back here because like this whole collab rather, the IP is actually called Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid. And so it's actually nice to see Kobayashi over here. However, I think for a lot of people who are not familiar with the IP and especially because Kobayashi wasn't introduced on any social media or anything she wasn't even in the, like the opening cutscene it does kind of get a little bit confusing as to why like this character is over here however for all of the people that do know Kobayashi like this is pretty nice all right and so the last thing I do want to cover are the characters themselves so I want to talk about how I feel about each one I think Toru is good Toru is actually like she feels like a very very solid character there are certainly a lot of situations in which snipers do outperform the detonators like there are some of those stages in the spire where you have the healers like locked up in between the blocks and you have to use a sniper to snipe them down or like diagonal attacks. Aside from that, like to be honest, Toru just feels really great to use. The fact that she has like an AOE component, not only in her active skill, but also her chain combo. I don't know if she is dishing out like cracked out amount of damages, but like she does at least feel like she's dishing out cracked out amount of damages. But otherwise, yeah, I really like Toru. I would give her like an 8.5, maybe even a 9 out of 10. All right, so just moving through, we have Kana over here for a second and I gotta say I ju she just feels a little bit lackluster let me put it that way like she feels okay and her real only competitor is like Wrath in which like it's not really a competitor because Wrath unfortunately is not that strong but like the combination of her entire kit with the active skill as well as the chain combo I just feel like I would rather take Michael or Revy it just feels like there's more choices over Kana and I guess the same could be said about Toru but when I use Toru I don't really like want to replace her when I use Kana I feel feel myself like missing Michael or Revy. I think a lot of it is in the damage component as well as the utility. Not really sure about this knockback mechanic and honestly the same for Toru as well. However, we might get some content that is gonna require it one day, so yeah, stay tuned. All right, next we've got Lukoa over here. I think she is quite strong. That really is like how I feel about her in a nutshell. She feels strong to use. She's got slow, her mortality mark system is kind of interesting. And although her chain combo is the X shape, which sometimes could be a little bit awkward to use she still feels quite strong so if I was to come back to Kana I would give her like maybe a 6.5 a 7 out of 10 in terms of performance for Lukoa I would say an 8 and so with that let's move on to Elma over here Elma's performance is okay like she has the column system for the chain combo but the active skill is interesting right it's like it could potentially be a map 
wide AOE. And so that could actually mean like destroying all of the stones in a particular stage that needs you to destroy stones to get like the lightning bolt thing or the AOE damage item that you can pick up to throw onto the enemies. But aside from that, like my feeling of Elma is that like she's okay. She's solid. Her utility is cool. I can definitely see like where it could fit in, but she doesn't feel like explicitly strong. And so like I would rate her maybe a 6 out of 10, something like that, maybe a 6.5 out of 10. And so that leaves us with Fafnir and Fafnir, I'm gonna just say it outright. I think he's like a 2 or a 3 out of 10, which is incredibly disappointing, but it's all because of the active skill really. The utility of the active skill just really isn't it. Like imagine like the enemy that you're fighting is a boss that is staying in its own location. For example, Nozad. You like can't even access the tiles at his feet, right? Because he is never going to move from there. And so in situations like that, like you might as well just give up your active skill. However, the one thing that I did notice is that it is on a one round cooldown. And so this could honestly lead to some pretty spicy interactions. So I'm thinking of like units like Bethel, a lot of skills that are reliant on stacking mechanisms. So for example, I believe Tessa, stuff like that. So although I do see the potential only because it's a one round skill in which I could actually probably get from a three or four star unit anyway, the effect of the active itself is kind of like, it's just really doo doo. All right, but otherwise the chain combo and the equipment, they're like, okay, they're decent. But especially in the context of converters, it's probably the active skill that really matters the most. Imagine if they took away one freaking tile from like the four tile converters. Like, so for example, Icy converts three red tiles instead of four, but then they gave her a damage buff instead. Like who cares about the damage buff? The fact that the conversion got nerfed, like that would suck. And so that kind of context over here applies. Like this conversion just really, really sucks. It ain't it. Yeah, sorry, buddy. It's about a three out of 10 for me. However, that is not the end of it. I do want to rate like all of the feel, all of the vibe, all of the art. Like the art is really incredible. All of the live 2D, all of the animations, like look at this little splash over here. And then they do have actually like an introduction with a little bit, a little bit of like facial expression changes, stuff like that. I do rate it. I do think it is like, I, for me, like a 9.5 out of 10. The fact that virtually everything that is important is moving, like they have the facial expressions changing. So look at her face. It's going to change after I click a few times. I think it's perfect. Like it's really, really freaking good. And then if I was to actually go over to their character profiles. So for example, we do have Toru over here. And if I click into her file, there is like some pretty nice stuff. We do have some voice files. We do have some Aurorian information. However, when I go into the replay, it is certainly lacking. That sucks. That that really sucks. But like everything else, like look at this live 2D. Even that freaking explosion in the background is actually animated. In terms of the art, in terms of the production value, in terms of the quality, absolutely 9.5, if not a 10 out of 10. Like there's not really that much more that you can do to make this better. However, with all of that being said, like that's pretty much the end of my criticism, the positive stuff. And so let's head on over to the community to see what they think. Because they essentially covered off every like single piece of criticism that I had for the event. All right, my guys. Welcome to the feedback channel. Let me just make that a little bit bigger so you guys can see it better. So I'm just going to gloss over the majority of them, but probably only really look in depth for the ones that are to do with the Dragon Maid collab. And so for example, this one over here, Tour Dog. I am once again asking for a featured five-star rate up increase on limited banners. Absolutely agree. And as we get through more and more feedback, you're going to see people who are like, oh man, I pulled 150 times, could not get Elma. Or I pulled 120 times, could not even get Lucor. Like that's freaking insane for a five-star unit. All right, so let's move through a little bit. We see Battle Cats collab, RuneScape collab. I don't know about that one. So here is one of the first ones, not only on this event, but actually all the five-star rates. I don't need to explain much. So yeah, that's just talking about the horrible five-star rate, which is at 25% if you hit a five-star. And unfortunately, the reality is that it is way too low. Me personally, I think at a minimum, at a minimum, we should be getting a 50% rate on the five-star. And that is before even considering like a pity system for the five-star. Number two, this event is kind of disappointing. I wish it was more interactive. This guy is absolutely spot on. This is probably the biggest criticism that everybody has for this event. And to be honest, if you guys disagree with this, then let me know. But like the fact that there is no story, there is pretty much nothing outside of collecting currency and then just using it to roll for rewards. It just doesn't feel very integrated into the world of alchemy stars. Like you want to be seeing Toru interact with Vice and like looking at how bad their cooking is. You do want to see Kana interacting with somebody else about like blowing things up. I don't know. I'm, unfortunately, I don't know if that's canonical, but that is certainly an was the expectation that we had coming into this collab. All right, and so the third piece of feedback, many have addressed this, but too limited back-to-back -back is 
Uh, yeah, I completely agree. Going straight from a Bethlehem banner, a limited exclusive banner, onto this collab, also exclusive banner, two of them actually, it's freaking absolutely brutal. For me personally, the fact that they've actually brought out a collab, it's like, I'm never ever going to roll on a permanent unit ever again. I am going to be saving up pities to be able to get like the Bethlehem. I am going to be saving up pities to get like the Toru or the Kanas of the future. And so I think this is a very fair piece of feedback, although we did kind of know that this draft Dragon Maid collab was coming. But yeah, for a lot of people, I think this did empty out their wallets. All right, next we've got a positive one. So he's saying that Toru is a solid sniper and Kana is on the lower side. Completely agree with that. And then another positive one, thanks for the free 20 pulls, although he got nothing notable from it. That is really, really sad. But I do have to completely agree with that as well. It just feels very generous when it's not only a 10 pull, but it is also a 20 pull. And that is not even including all of the gemmies, all of the Lou member that we are or have been getting from that uh, rolling event. All up, I believe we do get get about four to 5k, which is like another 15 pulls, which is pretty good. All right, but otherwise, weather forecaster, I think you've had some really great feedback, but let's move on. And look guys, I make my contributions as well, but like that's not what we wanna talk about today. So let's keep going. Another one about no story for the collabs, no stage is okay, but no unlockable stories, completely agree. Actually, that's, that kind of makes sense. Even if there was no like strictly any gameplay associated with it, to even have like unlockable stories potentially, I would take that. Another Bernie meme, I think this guy's gonna be posting it every single day until we get to the end. Another one for where is the story for the current collab. Another one for the consecutively limited characters. But then I see this one over here by Lumine. I think two weeks banner is too short for units that will be gone forever after the event has ended. I actually don't agree with this. I don't agree with the fact that it's because of the two weeks banner that gives us the feeling or rather these negative feelings. I think this negative reception, like this negative experience is actually from not having separated it from the Bethlehem banner. Like imagine if it was Bethlehem and then it was maybe like two or so months until we then got these two banners and this collab unit. And thank you for the subscribe, Ronaldo Benitez. <laughs> I think that if there was like a small gap of maybe like two months, maybe even one month between the last limited and this limited, it would have been received better. And so yeah, obviously nothing against you personally, Lumine, but I do think that this is not the right answer. All right, so moving through, what else do we do? So we have a complaint about Kana's kit, but I think he's saying the same thing that I have been saying, right? So Kana, she is going to be sending every everybody to the map border. And this is pretty much going to diminish her performance, especially as a three cluster chain sniper. He's got some potential fixes. Honestly, I don't really know the 100% fix for it. And so if you guys do want to like have a read through and potentially even vote on it and the staff, I do think they listen, maybe? You guys can certainly come onto the Discord and have a vote here. But otherwise, let's keep moving through. And this one, I think is the same. 14-ish days for the banners is not enough. I do think it's enough. It's just the gap between each of these limited banners is not enough. All right, moving through. Um, uh, this is an interesting one. So this one is pretty much asking for more furries. I'm to be honest, like quite indifferent to this. Like as long as they are giving me my booba because I am not getting tired of seeing booba on my screen. I honestly don't really mind. So yeah, indifferent about that one. All right, here we go, guys. Five star rates feel like a scam. Pulled 90 on Barton Banner and zero Bartons. Pulled 140 pulls on Nemesis and only one Nemesis. Then 50 pulls on Collab Banner and only one Lucola. That is insane. Almost 300 pulls and he only got two of the five stars that he needed. When you see stuff like this, like you absolutely know it's a negative experience. Like my experience with all of the six stars, it certainly had felt like that, uh, especially towards the start of the game. For you guys who have been with me for a while, you guys already know how crappy my six star rate was. And on top of that, I was losing so many freaking coin flips. And so yeah, I think just moving through a lot of the very similar feedback, maybe add some stories, 50% pull featured rate. I think I actually recommended the 50% as well. 50% just actually feels very fair, right? But something that we did talk about pull counter in history, I do agree with that as well. Another person asking for a 50% up and then or maybe some hard pity on top of that. I, I actually completely agree. But otherwise, like moving through, it kind of feels the same, same. I think everybody is kind of saying the same thing. 25% is just not enough and there is no story content for the event. This guy though, Shoyo Boyo, he only got two Lukowas in 140 pulls. That's freaking insane. Five star rate up is trash and that's a fact, god dang. 80 pulls and no collab six stars, that hurts. Okay, this one might actually take the cake. 150 pulls, no collab five stars, that's, that's utterly, 
utterly ridiculous. But yeah, I think that actually pretty much encapsulates all of the different things that I did want to talk about, especially in regards to the criticism towards this event. And so with that, I think we can actually just wrap this up. Can we get a pity for five stars, 66 people upvoted? You know that there is a problem here. Actually, you know what? Let me go up to like the very top and see the earliest pieces of feedback. See how much upvotes they actually got. And so we're starting over here. We've got Sammy. What is this event? No story, no event stages. 43 upvotes. Very, very similar. Oh, this is one we did not cover. A rainbow soul amber to the stellar gem store so that we can break through these limited six stars in the future. This is massive. And this is not only massive for the Dragon May collab, but also units like Bethlehem. You actually just cannot straight up get spooked by them anymore after they have left. And so therefore, any breakthroughs after like your base unit, you can never get again, which really sucks. And so I completely agree with this rainbow soul amber. Like at some point in time in the future, we're actually probably going to cap out probably very far in the future on those like the old seal breakthroughs. Hopefully by then we will have something similar to a rainbow soul amber. To be honest, I'm not asking this for like every single event or something, maybe like an anniversary or half year anniversaries. That seems kind of reasonable. And so to be honest, it's at this point where I start throwing the question back to you guys. Like, did I miss any of the criticism of the valid criticism that should have been given back to tour dog? And if I did, let me know down in the comments below. But otherwise, if you do agree or disagree, also let me know. And if you do end up leaving a comment, then thank you guys so much because it means you've made it up all the way to the end of the video. But otherwise, my guys, that is the end. And so if you did enjoy this piece of content, then please consider a thumbs up. And if you would like to see more, then please consider a subscribe. But otherwise, my guys, like although this event wasn't really like 100% what we expected, I did feel like it was, it was okay. And so let's expect greater things from them next time. However, this time, as Fafnir once said, all good things must come to an end. And so thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye-bye.